Hey guys and welcome back to another video here with Angel Bee Designs. If you are new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Um, what I will be doing today is I am going to show you guys how to sublimate a graduation tie. <laughs> Y'all, my ring light, it be messing me up. Okay, so I am going to show you guys how to design and sublimate a, um, a graduation tie. So I made this design in Canva myself and I will be taking you through the entire process of designing this graduation image and then we're going to go ahead and sublimate it onto this tie. Y'all, I absolutely love how it came out. Colors are vibrant, okay? And I had to do a special technique to get the letters to fit at the top of the tie while getting the image to sublimate fully on the bottom which i will be showing you so if you would like to learn how to create this tie yourself go ahead and stick around all right guys so i wanted to start off by showing you how i designed this image um so i'm gonna go over to my home and what i did was now i am in the app right now um, so your home is going to look like this. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go up to create a design and you want to go down here to custom size. And then you want to change this from pixels to inches. And the, um, dimensions that I used are 3.3 by 15 inches. Okay. These are the dimensions I use for this tie. And once we um, get over to the heat press, I'll show you exactly how I measured it so that you can go ahead and measure yours the same way. Or if you want to measure it a different way, you can. But I'm going to show you how I measured it. But then once I measured it, these are the, the dimensions that I got for the tie. Okay, so I'm going to go on over to my design here. So this is the, the design that I made that's going to go on the tie. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add a blank page. And then I'm going to show you how I designed it. Okay, so for starters, what I did was I went, now, if you have a picture of a graduate, you can go ahead and just add it in. Um, I don't, this is kind of a mock-up that I'm doing here. So what I did was I just went to my photos and I typed in uh, graduation. I wanted a Black person, so a Black woman. So I did type in Black people, graduation Black people, and um, this is the one that I found. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert her. Now, I do know that the background is white and I don't necessarily want it to be. So what I'm going to do is edit image and I'm going to go ahead and remove the background. Now, this is a pro feature. So if you are using the free version, you won't be able to remove the background. You'll have to utilize another platform to do that. Okay, so the next thing I did, I'm just going to kind of make her a big size, kind of like this is the background one, okay? So I'm going to make her a decent size over the whole thing, and then what I did was you're going to go up to this little grid here where it says transparency. You're going to select that, and we're just going to bring the transparency down, which kind of creates like a little background for us. And then... I'm gonna bring her in again, do the same thing, edit, remove background. And then we're just gonna make her this the size that we need on our template here. Okay, so I kind of like how that looks, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is there was like some gold glitter down here at the bottom. What I'm going to do is go into my elements and I'm going to type in gold glitter. And then there's a whole bunch of different options that pop up. Um, I think I'm, I selected this one or it was one that was similar. No, I think it was this one. Okay. And this is because this has a crown next to it. This is a pro glitter element. So what I did was I just added it to my canvas and put it right on top like that. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add in this class of, and then I'm gonna explain to you why I made these small, okay? And I'm gonna type in here, class of 
2022. And that's how I found it. Okay. It's this pro banner here. Oops. We need that on this one. And then what I did was I just changed the color to blue. <clears throat> And I'm going to use this blue here. Okay, so if you look on this image, these letters, this word, it's kind of small. The reason why I did that, if you think about how a tie looks, okay, the bottom part of the tie is fatter than the top part of the tie where the knot is. So the reason why I made these words smaller was because this bottom part is the fat part of the tie. But because I can't make my templates look exactly how the tie is, we know that the tie goes in like this, right? A tie, you got the fat part and it kind of goes up like this. And as it goes up, it goes, it gets smaller, it gets skinnier. As the tie gets up closer towards the knot, it gets skinnier. Okay, so I can't make my piece of paper look that way. I can't make my template tile. I mean, I guess I could go on Etsy and try to find one, but I don't want to. Um, so to accommodate that, what I did was I measured the length of the skinny part of the tie, which on mine was two inches. So what I did was I made sure that these letters, if you see this black box where it says W2H zero point, this black box that says W2H 0.8, then um, basically what that is telling me is that this these letters, this SHS letters, they are two inches wide. So I know that because the skinny part of my tie is two inches, that these words are going to fit onto the skinny part of my tie. Same with these letters, same with these letters. They're all two inches, okay? so that So I know that when I go to print, these letters are going to fit onto the skinny part of the tie, which is what I want. Now this blue part is gonna go over a little bit, which is fine. And then the cap on this background is gonna go over the edge a little bit, which is also fine, okay? But that's why I did that. So what I'm doing here basically is the exact same. I just wanna make sure that the width on this these letters is at least two inches, okay? And then for graduate, I just got a text box. Um, and then the script that I used was above the script. And I typed in the word graduate, an exclamation point. And then what I did was I added an effect. I went to shadow and I used the color yellow made that more transparent so you could really see it. And then for this little gradient box, we're gonna go to elements and we're gonna type in gradient. And you wanna use a graphic gradient. Oh, wow, they have way more gradients now than they did before. This is exciting. A lot of these are new. I haven't seen them. But um, I'm looking for the one that I used. I think I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit, which um, just for time's sake, I'm going to go into my recently used to pull it, which is right here. This is it's a transparent gradient highlight halftone is the name of it. So let's go here. Let's see if we can find it. Transparent gradient. Okay, so that was one of them. I'm trying to see if they have it already in the color blue. Well, this one was it right here. It's white. I just saw it. Where to go? right here. So actually, no, you can't change the color on that one. So you're going to have to find the blue one. Um, if you want to use the color blue, you're just going to have to scroll through to find the color blue. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm going to go to my recents and I'm just going to grab it. Okay. But this is the name of it. It is, um, oh, and it's 
Oh, it's free for Canva Pro. So this is a pro element as well. Um, but it's a transparent gradient highlight halftone is the name of it. If you are liking this color, this blue color. So what I did was I just added that to the top of the image here. And then I used um, gold letters. So these ones, SHS. And then I just kind of placed them next to each other. You can find this in the element section. All you have to do is type in gold letters and they will, uh, an array of gold letters will come up for you. Okay, and then I'm gonna select that, hold the shift key, select the H, select the S and group so that it is one group. And then I want to make sure that again, this is two inches. And it is, so we're good to go. Okay, and then I think what I did here is I just made this a little bit bigger so that I can make this a little bit bigger as well. Okay, but that's pretty much all that I did for to make this image, okay? I just used a lot of different Canva elements and text and just kind of put them together. Again, I am in Canva Pro, um, but this is how I created this image here. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'll delete that one. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to download this. So we're gonna go up to share, click share. We're gonna go over here to download and it's already gonna say PNG, which is the suggested file type for this. We're gonna keep that. We want PNG. We're not gonna do anything other than this. We're not gonna compress the file or make the uh, background transparent. We wanna leave it just like this. And then you're gonna go ahead and download it, okay? Once you download it, we're gonna go to Silhouette Studio. And I do already have this set up in my Silhouette Studio. So we're just going to go there. If I can get my Silhouette Studio to pop up. Let me close it. My computer has been acting so slow lately and then we'll open it back up. So I can show you how I printed it off. Um, I do have the Epson 8500. Um, but I am using the rear um, printer feed to use the eight and a half by 14 paper. Oh my gosh, my Silhouette Studio is not popping up. Okay, I don't know what's going on with my Silhouette Studio or my computer altogether, but basically all I did was I uploaded this into my Silhouette Studio, the whole image, and then I did um, I did do my measurements that I printed it off was three by three wide by 15 inches high. Even though I do know that my printer, uh, my printer paper is eight and a half by 14. So it's going to print over the edge just a little bit, which is fine because we have this extra space up here to accommodate for that. And then we have some extra space, a lot of extra space down here to accommodate for it as well. So I did upload it to Silhouette Studio and I printed a three by three by 15. Don't forget to mirror if you don't have that setting there, make sure your borderless printing is um, turned off. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it printed off. And then I will meet you guys at my heat press and we're gonna go ahead and sublimate it together. All right, guys, so I'm at my heat press here. It is preheating. Um, we are at 400 degrees. <clears throat> um, and then here is my image here. I did print this off on eight and a half by 14 paper. I used my rear feed on my printer to do so. And then here's my tie. Now, what I did with my tie was I did have my husband go ahead and put it on. So this is an adult tie. I, what I had my husband do is I had him put it on for me and he tied it. And then I just had him loosen it a little bit. So this is, if he were to have this tie around his neck, this is pretty much where the knot would be. Um, give or take maybe like, le like a quarter of an inch, okay? So what I did to measure is I want the image to be on this part of the tie going underneath the knot, okay? Going underneath the knot. So what I did was I measured from right here underneath the knot 
all the way down to the very tip okay so as you can see you know ties are skinnier here and they get fatter as they go down so this part here is the two inch part up here and then this part is the thicker part down here which is five inches so <clears throat> the whole image i ended up making um 3.3 because i didn't want to make it five because then the words would have had to have been even smaller so what i did was the image is 3.3 but the measure, I'm sorry, the image is, I printed it at five in inches, I believe. Okay. And then it's going to cover the whole bottom part. And then we may remember in Canva, we made the inches here two inches so that you will be able to see the full letters going up here, which is the SHS graduate class of. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's how I measured the tie and that's how I created the image so that hopefully this prints on the tie the way that it's supposed to okay okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get this lined up on my paper here um, and I'm gonna print this sideways my heat press is a 15 by 15 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and I want to line this up. I wanna, like I said, I wanna make sure the tip of the um, the tip of the tie is getting sublimated on. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this down like that. Okay. And I'm going to tape in different sections because I want to make sure that this tie I gotta flip it over I want to make sure that this tie does not move and then down up here we have to make sure that the tie is covering the letters as well So I'm, I made sure that the tie is covering the letters and I'm taping it because again, I do not want it to move. Okay, so we have it nice and taped. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead. I actually need a piece of butcher paper here. So let me grab a piece of butcher paper first. Okay. I'm gonna put my butcher paper down and then we are going to go ahead and turn our tie over so the paper is facing up. Just gonna double check my image and it looks good. It does look like it's on the tie. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't move too much. And then the knot part of the tie is hanging over the edge, okay? And I need another piece of butcher paper to cover this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover this, make sure that my knot is hanging off, make sure my image is on here all the way. Looks good. So we're going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to hold it at the knot while I close it. All right. And now we are pressing this at 400 degrees for one minute, okay? Um, I will make sure I link everything down below. I do have a link if you want to try Canva Pro free for 30 days. I do have a link for that trial. I will link it down below. Um, I have the link for all of my sublimation supplies that I used today. My butcher paper, heat tape, literally all of that. The tie, the ink, um, everything will be linked down below as well as my social media. So... Um, if you haven't joined my Facebook group already, Crafty Mamas with an S, that will also be linked down below as well. So definitely make sure you check the description box um, for any of the video details that you may need. Now when I open this, because it's about to beep, when I open this, I'm going to hold the knot because the knot keeps wanting to slip off. I don't want to create any ghosting, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. And make sure I'm holding the knot so it doesn't slide off. All right, let's see what we got. So I'm gonna remove the top P 
piece of butcher paper. Oh, MG, that looks good, y'all. <laughs> it's a hair crooked, a hair, like, I mean, an actual literal hair crooked. But let me see here. Let's see if I can show you guys. Okay, so... You see how there, the SHS and the graduate is going more towards this side and there's a little bit more space here. So I could have moved this over like literally a hair. But other than that, OMG, y'all, look. Do you see how vibrant that is? This looks so good. Oh my gosh, I love how this turned out. And then, you know, if you want, okay, you don't have to do this because here's where the knot is going to sit. So <clears throat> the knot would have to be, let's say my husband was to wear this, right? He did have to loosen the knot a little bit to get it over his head. So when he put it back over his head, he would have to lift this up a little bit just to tighten it a little bit more, which is going to create in between the tie and the top of this SHS part, a little piece of white spot right here. If you wanted to, you could just print off um, this color blue on a piece of paper and just sublimate that white part so that blue went all the way up to the knot if you actually wanted it to. But, I mean, if you're not really worrying about it, then, I mean, I think this looks good. Oh my gosh. Do y'all see how clear and crisp this picture turned out? OMG. Huh, and making these words smaller, that good. Good job, Angel. Good job. Okay, I'm sorry. Sometimes you gotta pat yourself on the back, but I love how this turned out. That was perfect. That was a perfect design, perfect press. OMG. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until the next video, guys. Bye.